So Republican governors are beginning to speak up following the backlash to news that Roe versus Wade's death is imminent, and they're trying to justify their state's extremist anti-choice laws. Now, it's not enough that they banned abortion in their states because that would be barbaric in and of itself, but their laws on abortion are so restrictive that they don't even have exceptions for rape or sexual assault. So Asa Hutchinson, the governor of Arkansas, is going to go on national TV and explain how his heart goes out to the victims of rape and incest. But unfortunately, you know, he signed that bill into law, and now you can't get an abortion in the state of Arkansas if you were raped or you're the victim of incest. And even if, you know, that wasn't the case, you still should be able to have control over your own bodily autonomy. But just look at how extreme and barbaric their way of thinking is. Take a look. What would you say to those women who seek an abortion, who don't have the money to travel, who don't have the money to raise a child? What would you say to them? Well, first of all, again, that's where uh, your heart goes out to them. I've had to deal with those very difficult circumstances of, of rape and incest as a governor, and uh, it's difficult. And so you have to understand that. You have to provide services, and I believe that uh, we want to increase the services for maternal health, to increase the uh, services for adoption services as well. And so we want to invest in those areas that will help those uh, women with very difficult uh, uh, circumstances of the pregnancy. Uh, but secondly, I think to your point, uh, the rape and incest uh, exceptions will continue to be a part of the debate. Uh, right now, uh, we do not have rape and incest as exceptions under the Arkansas trigger law, but there's, uh, I think that will be a part of the debate. Would you I've like to see those exceptions? Those exceptions are important. Yes, I expressed whenever I signed the law that I would prefer the rape and incest exceptions to be in there. And even though we have the trigger law, I expect those exceptions to be a significant part of the debate in the future, even though uh, we're going to immediately go to restrict abortions uh, in the exceptions with the exception of the life of the mother in danger. Why do you he really wishes that the exceptions for uh, rape and incest were in the bill that he chose to sign into law? But they're not. So, you know, I'm sure that the women who were raped who can't get abortions in Arkansas will take comfort knowing that your heart goes out to them. What we're listening to here is a sociopath. That individual is a sociopath. As governor, he chose to sign that bill into law. And now he's saying, well, the way that we're dealing with it is we're basically like trying to help with adoption somehow. We're going to force every single victim of rape and incest to carry that fetus to term. But I mean, my heart goes out to you. Hope that means something. I mean, it, it's almost as idiotic as when the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, said, uh, you know, in response to a question about rape or incest, oh, we're just going to get rid of rape in the state of Texas. We're going to make sure that these rapists fear for their lives or something to that effect, like I'm paraphrasing. But they're so immature, so unrealistic, so idiotic and barbaric in their way of thinking that we should be embarrassed that politicians like this are in prominent positions of power in their states. Now, I want to go to Mississippi, where Governor Tate Reeves, who looks like a younger version of Mitch McConnell and has all the same evil policies as him, uh, is going to explain uh, his state's abortion ban, which does not include exceptions for incest. He's going to explain why, you know, this is good, apparently. Take a look. The, so the snapback law in two, that, that was passed in 2007 has no uh, exception for incest. So assuming that the Supreme Court uh, overturns Roe v. Wade, uh, the state of Mississippi will force girls and women who are the victims of incest to carry those childs to term. Can you explain why that is going to be your law? Well, that's going to be the law because in 2007, the Mississippi legislature passed it. I, I will tell you, Jake, um, and this sort of speaks to how far the, the Democrats in Washington have come on this issue. But in 2007, when the trigger law was put in place, uh, we had a Democrat Speaker of the House and we had a Democrat Chairman of the Public Health Committee in the Mississippi House yeah. of Representatives. But uh, why, why are you going to this particular piece of legislation? Why is it acceptable in your and state so, to force girls who are victims of incest to carry those child children to term? Well, as you know, Jake, um, over ninety-two percent of all abortions in America are elective procedures. Um, 
when you look at the number of, of those that actually are involved in incest, it's less than 1%. And if we need to have that conversation in the future about potential this is uh, your exceptions law. in the trigger law, we can certainly do that. But the reality is that, again, that affects less than 1% of all abortions in America well, that, on an annual basis. Okay, but that is going to be the law of Mississippi. Let me ask you, what about a fetus that has serious or fatal abnormalities that will not allow that fetus to live outside the womb? Is the state of Mississippi going to force those girls and women who have this tragedy inside them to carry the child to term? Are you going to force them to do that? Well, Jake, I'll tell you, I think that, that these questions uh, illustrate exactly what we've been talking about, and that is you're dealing in, in uh, examples that are rare and are a very small percentage of the overall abortions. And the reason for that is because when you talk to Americans, regardless of what the, what the polling says with respect to overturning Roe v. Wade, the vast majority of Americans recognize that the abortion laws in America right now, that is what are extreme. America's abortion laws are uh, extreme relative to the rest of the Western world. Yeah. You know that even if the court did not overturn Roe, Jake, even if the court did not overturn Roe, even if they just decided to uphold Mississippi's 15-week ban, that 39 out of 42 countries in Europe would still have more I, restrictive abortion laws. Yeah. The vast majority of Americans support restrictions that are reasonable on abortions, and the overturning of Roe is simply going to return those decision-making processes to the states back to and the right, individual and, legislatures in yeah, all 50 and I'm, states. And I'm asking you about this, the law in your state and the exceptions that the law does not offer to Mississippi women and girls who are victims of incest, who have uh, f uh, fetuses that have fatal or very serious abnormalities, uh, which is not really all that rare, to be honest. I mean, I know plenty of women that that has happened to, and they had to, to you know, they wanted to have a healthy child, but they weren't able to, uh, and your law would force them to carry it, the child to term. Notice how he couldn't justify it. He had to change the conversation, do what aboutism. Oh, it's actually the Democrats who are extreme. No, it's you who, who is extreme in this instance. You're a fucking barbarian. You are a barbarian. You are a caveman. You are a disgusting, psychopathic individual who should not have power. And you're trying to talk about the Democrats being extreme. Oh, well, when we did all of these terrible things, Democrats were in control. Uh, in this state, and I, I approve of it, but the Democrats were in control. Okay, fuck those Democrats. They're bad people, but you're the governor of this state. So there are no exceptions for victims of incest. Justify it. Try to do that, I dare you. And he can't, so he didn't. So he talked about how, um, you know, the restrictions that Americans support on abortion, like this is this is very common. And that's not wrong. Americans do support restrictions on abortion, but they supported the restrictions imposed in Roe v. Wade. Nobody is saying, hey, you know what? If a woman changes her mind when she's eight and a half months pregnant, she should be able to abort that baby. Nobody is arguing for that. Nobody's arguing for that. Now they'd respond by saying, well, oh, well, what about late-term abortions? Late-term ab abortions are incredibly rare and they're only a thing because it's necessary to save the life of the mother. So they give the mother that choice, you or your baby. And it's a horrible decision, but Republicans, they like to use those rare examples to explain why abortion is so bad. But yet here he is saying that um, his draconian law is necessary because, you know, these incest cases, they're only 1% of pregnancies. And even if that's the case, the 1% just... Fuck them. If it's only 1%, then perhaps you don't have to be as extreme in your anti-choice views that you could permit that 1% to allow, uh, to get uh, abortions. But he is just, their brains, uh, they don't function like you and I, right? You would think logically, okay, so they're so extreme against abortions. In states like Louisiana, they want to charge women with homicide. So what are these governors doing to actually limit the number of unwanted pregnancies in the first place? Are they expanding access to contraception? So in the state of Mississippi, if he's really that extreme when it comes to abortion, what he could do is allow free contraception to all Mississippi residents. So is he going to do that? Well, no, because uh, lawmakers in Mississippi want to ban contraception. Now, he's, go he's going to say, oh, no, that's not on the agenda right now, but understand 
that the one thing that will prevent unwanted pregnancies that lead to abortion in the first place, that's also going to be a target of the GOP. He does not rule it out. Listen very carefully to what he says here when asked. But just to be clear, the state of Mississippi, you're not going to then target uh, IUD or Plan B, which are methods of birth control that might not allow a fertilized egg to be implanted. And this is not a theoretical construct. This is not a, a you know, in the state of Louisiana, which I recognize is a neighboring state, not your state. I mean, they're talking about uh, not only criminally charging uh, girls and women who get abortions uh, as, you know, as, as being committing homicide, but they're also talking about defining the moment uh, of conception as fertilization, which would theoretically, if this were to become the law of Louisiana, and it is not yet, uh, mean that murder, if you use an IUD, you are committing murder theoretically. So it's, it's not, I'm not making this up. This is, th these are the conversations going on in legislatures in your, in your area. But so just to be clear, you have no intention of seeking to ban IUDs or Plan B. That is not what we are focused on at this time. We're, we're focused on uh, looking at, see what the court allows for. Uh, the, the bill that is before the court is a 15-week ban. We, we believe that, that the overturning of Roe is the correct decision by the court. And, and so in Mississippi, we don't, we don't have laws on the books that would lead to uh, arresting uh, individuals uh, or, or anything along those lines. Well, how reasonable. You know, they're not going to charge women with murder. They're just going to make sure that uh, victims of rape and incest are uh, forced to carry the fetus of their abuser to term. <laughs> what do you even say? Now, he said, um, you know, that they're not looking at banning contraception at this time, at this time. But in a month or two from now, it's on the table. They're already talking about this. They want to do it. Now, he can't necessarily do that right now because it's unconstitutional but what we're going to likely see is the same thing that we saw in the lead up to rose demise we're going to see one state propose some sort of a ban on contraception in an effort to basically go the supreme court into revisiting griswold v connecticut and then this far-right extremist supreme court will indeed overturn that thus paving the way for these states to not just ban abortion but ban the one thing that prevents abortion contraception so what we're listening to here, these interviews that we watched, these are from sociopathic barbarians. They are barbarians. They are extremists instituting draconian laws that are going to kill women. But they're pro-life, don't you worry. They care about life. They're so pro-life that they want to fucking kill women. That's what these laws are going to do. They're forcing women to go back to coat hanger abortions and back alleys. But they're very pro-life. They care about life. They're literally just anti-woman and they are anti-choice extremists. These are theocrats who want to impose their minoritarian views on everyone in society. It doesn't matter what the state is. No state has more than 30% of support for overturning Roe v. Wade, but they are going to impose their theocratic fascistic beliefs on everyone. And they will continue to do this and push the envelope even further until Americans stand up once and for all and say enough is enough.